All right, so here we go. This is part six. <laughs> I'm losing track. This is part six. Um, and this is called Maple Leaf Gardens Project. All right, so make sure you have this file open from your uh, OneDrive account here. It's all the way down here. I don't know. I might I might rearrange this. I shouldn't say that. It might not be down there. All right, <clears throat> and let's just get a start. On slide three, we have a video. This is Mike from Mike's office, all right? And if you guys don't know what Mike's office is, um, he makes all these videos about certification and uh, he, he doesn't have anything for 2019, but you know, these are his projects from 20, um, the 2016 version of the exam. And what I did was I incorporated all of the questions uh, that I could uh, kind of think of that I saw, the skills that I saw uh, from the actual exam when I, when I took the exam. And there wasn't much. There was like a handful of new new things. So this is Mike. Um, I, I've never actually seen him. Like that cheese wall. Okay. All right. It is just a, a video of Mike. On slide three, crop the video so that the area shown is 6.5 inches from the left margin and also crop the width to 4.4 inches. All right. So when you click on a video in PowerPoint, just like picture anything else, you're going to get video tools, contextual tabs up here, and you're going to get format and playback. All right. We're going to go to format video and, uh, oh no, they want us to do right clicking for format, although you can do it up here. Okay. Whatever. We're going to right click and we're going to say format video and we're going to go to uh, crop over here. Oh no, it was right there. Sorry. Crop. Boom. All right. And we've done this before with a it was a picture, I think. All right. They want it 6.5 from the left. So in the, in the crop position section, in left, we're going to type in 6.5 and 4.4 for the width. And press enter. And that's it. That's our video. Wow. Okay. I wonder why. Yeah, I didn't write that question. That's from Mike's office. And, uh, Whatever it works. Again, when you're when you're dealing with a video, if you click on the video and you go to either the format or the playback tab, everything you're going to need to do is right here. Any kind of editing that they're going to want you to do is going to be right here on test questions. I've seen them want you to do like volume controls and stuff like that for videos. You know, uh, control like if it's played on click. You know, when it starts playing. Uh, they want you to trim it. I've seen that. I've seen fade in and out before. There's not much that you can do though with a video. And then under the format tab, this is exactly like picture tools. There's really nothing different to it. All right, so on slide two, this is number 45. Slide two, on slide two, apply the circle shape motion path to the shape that says no way. All right, so here's our shape right here. And I'm gonna go ahead and uh, click on our actual shape animation tab. We should have a motion path, no? apply the circle motion path. Okay, so we don't have one yet. So right here, we're going to say circle shape motion path. Or, or you could do it this way. Let's see if it's different just to make sure. More motion paths, circle. It's the same. You know what, but if the question says that, circle shape motion path, I don't know if I would just kind of rely on, you know, this down here. Because it just says shapes, and then I guess you could go over here and just say circle. It's the same thing, I guess. doesn't matter. It just makes me nervous on, like, if the question is going to give it to you or not. All right. Add the media placeholder to the media layout. Position it beneath the title placeholder. This is number 46, by the way. Position it beneath the title placeholder. Align the left and right margins uh, of the title. Align left and right margins to the margins of the title placeholder. I can't read. So view tab. Uh, media placeholder to the media layout. So we're going to go to slide master, right? And we're going to start hovering over these things until we find media layout. Right there, media layout. Um, add a media placeholder. So insert placeholder. We want to do media. We're going to click and drag it and just kind of drop it below the title bar. And then we're going to go ahead and hover 
over this circle right here and drag it until we get these alignment guides that tells us that we're in line with our title box. This is our title box up here, and we want this box to be in line with it on the left and the right edge. All right. And that's it. All right. Uh, when you're done, go back to the Slide Master tab and say Close Master View. That is the most important thing. On slide four, convert this list to a vertical picture. Oh, good. This is smart art. So here's a list, right? It's a bulleted list. What they want us to do is convert this list to smart art. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to go um, to the home tab. First of all, make sure that you're selecting the entire list. Don't just select one thing and see how I have a dotted line around my list um, in the in the text box. Click on that dotted line and it's going to become solid. That means that you've selected everything inside that text box. All right. That's a good habit to get into. Um, we're going to go right here into the home tab and you're going to see convert to smart art. You might actually have a button that says convert to smart art. Um, and then I'm going to go down here to more smart art graphics. On the left hand side, I'm going to go ahead and say list because it's a list and it's a vertical picture accent list. Um, the most frustrating part is that you never know. I know what target list is because that's in G metrics, but you never know what these things are called. So we're looking for vertical picture accent list. Vertical picture accent list. T title, uh, titled vertical block list. Vertical picture accent list. Boom. And then say OK. If you do this correctly, it's going to go ahead and insert the text into your smart art for you. All right. All right. That's cool. Um, number 48, create a section after slide two called gardens that includes slides three through five. All right. So when you're creating a section, sections just kind of divide your PowerPoint presentation. You're going to right click in the little area between slides two and three, and you're going to say add section. It's going to add what's called an untitled section, and you're going to get a little rename box up here. And we're going to call this section gardens and say, OK. Yeah, we got it. Thank you. I'm not sure what that even said, but that's handy. I like those little pop ups. If you're unfamiliar with PowerPoint and Word, pay attention to those little pop-ups. They give you little tricks and stuff like that. All right. On slide two, add the alternative text description, alt text description, maple leaf to the bottom right image. Okay, so alternative text is one of those things that, um, you know, I kind of drill into my students early on. So I'm going to go ahead and let me get out of here so you can see what this does. Um, I'm going to go ahead and right click on the picture here and I'm going to go to format picture. All right. I'm going to go to um, size and properties and under wait, is it size and properties? No, it's not. Is it right here? Size, position, text box. Where is it? Okay, so weird. This is probably one of those things that you're going to notice is a little different with 2019. And I didn't even notice this when I was writing this. But now when you right click, there is a little thing that says edit alt text. That's weird because they took it out of this. I couldn't find it. So I guess you have to go here to enter your alt text now. And there it is. All right. You also have a title and a description for alt text. All right. So it says add the alt text description maple leaf to the bottom right image. All right, um, so just type in the words maple leaf right there with alt text. There's no saving or anything like that. And if you guys don't know what alt text is, it's basically um, text that you can add to like tables and charts and things like that that will um, audibly, uh, it'll read, it, it's kind of like a read aloud, all right, uh, for people who might have um, uh, visual impairments or hearing impairments or things like that. Um, it will It will kind of, uh, it, I guess it just reads aloud. I guess that's what it does, you know. All right, so close this out. 
you'll see alt text get used to that alt text is always a right click thing but it's usually under like format let's see if i can get to it here i know i shouldn't format shape size and position yeah they took it out here too maybe it's under text options 3d nope nope not under shape options either weird huh so is there an alt text here edit alt text okay well that's how you have to do it now there you go that's how you do alt text now just right click it's easier anyway okay anyway where was i uh we're almost done with this part guys this is a long one on slide five there's nothing on slide five insert a vertical box list smart art graphic so um, they want you to use the actual placeholder here. So we're going to click on Smart Art. We're going to say List. It wants Vertical Block List. All right, Vertical Block List. It looks like that's it. No, of course not. Vertical Bracket List, Vertical Box List. Right there. That was easy. Say OK. It wants us to uh, enter the text Learn, Play, and Socialize from top to bottom. All right, so I'm never one of those people that clicks in my smart art to actually type. I'm gonna click on the arrow beside it to open up the bulleted list. Um, and I'm gonna say learn, play, anti-socialize. All right, a uh, couple other things that you might see with smart art. They might want you to like rearrange smart art. So when you click beside the bullets here, in your list you're gonna see move up and move down and you can rearrange things so if they want like socialize to be the top shape you could move this up twice like that all right just in case you see a question that I never you know saw um, you know we already went through changing smart art from left to right um, this is a big question they're gonna want you to change the smart art colors of something and I think I have that coming up and they always like to, to use this colorful range five to six all right. So again, when you click on your smart art, just like everything else, you get a smart art contextual tab up here and you get design and format. And whatever they ask you to do on the test is going to be under these tabs. All right. For the most part, 99 percent of the time. Um, one really important thing is that they might actually ask you to resize your smart art. Make sure that you don't just click in your smart art like this and then try to resize it. What that does is it just resizes one shape out of the smart art instead of the whole piece of smart art you always want to click on the border around the smart art before you resize it to make sure that you've selected the entire thing all right on slide four use the 3d model feature to insert a piano model from the online image folder there's not much room here for a 3d model what why didn't we do it on slide three from the online image folder resize the image okay well we'll do it here so we're going to say insert you're going to see 3d models over here under illustrations it's a new thing um, and we're going to say from online sources and you're just going to say piano all right i don't care which one you pick Shh, doesn't matter to me and say insert I'm probably going to have to shrink it down quite a bit. It says resize it. So uh, right here, we're going to say two for the height and 1.78 for the width. Oh, you know what we're going to have to do? See how it's automatically adjusting here? We're going to have to open up the size panel over here and we're going to have to uncheck lock aspect ratio or else it's going to keep uh, resizing it so we're going to resize the model to two for the height and now see how the width is not adjusting itself all right and this needs to be 1.78 it's very specific all right and that's it where does it say to put Uh, doesn't say to put it anywhere. All right, I'm going to stick it right there. I'm going to keep it right there. Um, duplicate slide five. So on slide five, right here, we're just going to right click and we're going to say 
duplicate. That's it. All right, and that's everything in part six. We have one more part to go uh, with part seven, and then um, that's it, guys. So we'll finish this up in just a minute.